Like a language feed a feature coordinated with the .NET core team, non-trivial, right? This is really hard. And so we're not going to do it because you don't want to have to have an extra class. But there is some capabilities here that this is enabling. Right now, you cannot change an interface without breaking the world. If you go ahead and add a member to an interface and somebody has implemented your interface, mm -hmm. they will no longer compile. That's bad. However, if we allowed you to have a default implementation on an interface method that you added to an existing interface, you would still compile. Now, you may still throw a null reference, I mean, a not implemented exception. You can do whatever you like, but you still will compile. For example, let's imagine that you implement this hypothetically speaking. I'm not saying anything, but let's imagine you have an ienumerable interface and you would like to support hypothetically an index operator that allows you to count backwards. And so you need to take an index type. Again, hypothetically, what if I could add to the ienumerable interface a new member method that says count backwards that would take an index, no, sorry, a new uh, index operator that would take an index that would count backwards. However inefficiently, it would count backwards. And now I could add that to ienumerable without breaking every single bit of code out there in the world if they happen to have collections in their code. Right? Now, I'm not saying we're doing that with, with ienumerable or anything like that, but you get the concept. That would be pretty powerful. We've got a new language feature. We want to make it available for all collections, including arrays. Let's go ahead and support the index operator in ienumerable and do it in a way that does not break for everyone. It's just an example. You get the concept? So, again, this is hard to get in. It's very, it's to get a coordinated release between the .NET team, uh, ILT, uh, uh, .NET CLR team, and the C Sharp team is very difficult. But if we do, this is a feature that is potentially possible. And the reason it is, it allows you to go ahead and change interfaces without breaking the world. Notice that when we go ahead and talk about default implementations, it also opens up the fact that you can go ahead and add accessibility modifiers into interfaces, not something supported today. You can go, because we want to support refactoring, you can go into aesthetic methods, and you can go, then go and deal with things like override and virtual and blah, 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 blah. And you would get multiple inheritance of sorts. Mm. How many of you are using switch statements today for pattern matching? C sharp 7. Raise your hand. We can skip the slide in that case. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have a scenario where you would like polymorphic behavior, but you don't have a common base type, so you need to have a switch type, the switch statement, and the switch statement needs to go ahead and look at the characteristics to decide what to do, then you need to do pattern matching of some sort. So this is not in a scenario where you have polymorphism by default. You have the same base type and has the method you want to call. This is a more complicated scenario where you need to do variable, you need to operate on various types that do not implement the same interface or derive from the same class other than object. In this case, what we can say is go ahead and in starting in C sharp 7, we no longer restricted to types that have literal values. You can go ahead and pass person in a switch statement today in C sharp 7. But we're trying to make the syntax better. For example, if we allow you to use expressions for your case statements, you no longer need to have a break statement or a jump statement. So we've eliminated the need for a jump statement in a switch statement as long as you can go use expressions. Next, we're going to go ahead and declare the type professor, and we're going to say we don't care about the first value of the constructor, but we do care about the last name and the subject, and then we can actually declare those variables on the fly. And we will assign the last name and the subject, and we'll go ahead and use those in the expression. Again, all you're passing is the person class, if the person class is a professor. And we can keep going. Now, if it's a student, we can actually go into a subclass, I mean, into 
value, uh, blah, 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 a property of the student called advisor, and we can actually go pull out the advisor's last name. Now, I challenge any of you to go start writing switch, uh, enhanced pattern matching switch statements without an ID that can match up your parentheses. We can also do things like, hey, let's go ahead and take that person, and we can go ahead and just capture the first name. We're now we're going to go use a deconstructor, just to be clear. We're using the deconstructor operator on a class, again, introduced in C-sharp 7. The deconstructor can go ahead and deconstruct a person into first name and last name, but we don't care about the last name. And so now we can go ahead and just print out nothing, because that's really exciting. And... Uh, then we can handle that. Oh, if then we can handle default with two curly brackets. And don't forget, null is not covered in any of the other two scenarios. So we had to have to null as well because we don't know the data type if you pass null. And like with C sharp seven, the order when null appears is not important because it's a unique case; it can appear anywhere. I'm going to keep going. These are some other ideas. Again, we're on the challenge to get to kinds of scenarios, but um, we're looking at sort of null uh, coalescing assignments, target type new expressions, uh, and, and records. I, I, I think these are fairly unlikely, but I'm not on the team. But if you would like one, it is open source. Questions, comments? Complaints, complaints is down the hall of the bathroom on the left. <laughs> Question, comments, complaints, suggestions. So what is the reason for the polymorphic switch statement? So the question was, what is the reason for polymorphic switch statement? Well, consider some really thorny scenarios like numeric types. Right? How do I handle numeric types where I want to do a whole series of operations of numeric types? But I want to handle int and double and, and triple and, oh wait, sorry. I mean int and double and long, but there's no common interface and there's no common behavior and I want to go ahead and do operations on that like add or something like that. If there's a specific math, mathematical operation I want to handle differently because of the type without converting it, this might be a, a good scenario just as an example. Yeah, so the, 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 the comment is this is fairly challenging to maintain, and I want to say uh, you're absolutely right. I, I, what I say to people in like C-sharp 7 and, and, and who are starting to do pattern matching using switch statements like this is figure out a way to use a polymorphism. And if that doesn't work, look harder. And if you still can't find one, then okay. Because right? this, this is a, this is, you add a new type, your switch statement's not gonna, it's gonna not handle it, right? If you do use polymorphism, it just works. So do not use this unless it's a last resort. Polymorphism does not work. This is a better syntax. It's not really necessarily more. You can do this today in C sharp seven using where clauses, um, you know, filter expressions, and and just a C sharp seven pattern matching. So this is better syntax. You know, it's easier to get there, but it's it's pretty gnarly. Uh, there, there's weird scenarios like. If you declare this as var, uh, if you declare this as var, it'll handle null. But if you don't, well, this is a string, so it's not null. You know, there's just weird scenarios like that that like start to. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I bored you all. Uh, here's my contact information. For those of you who are looking for jobs in Spokane, just kidding. Thanks, everyone. Hopefully, I didn't keep you up too late. Thank you.